Hey guys, how are you doing? Thanks a lot for all the messages I received about uh, my previous video. Seems a lot of people enjoyed. Glad about that. Uh, I want to make another. I'm just done another quick video uh, that's mainly focused on drums. Something that uh, I've kind of like forgot from the previous video. And the previous video I mentioned uh, briefly how you can use. Uh, clippers on the drums to get your drum sounds in nice. Uh, it's a different technique from the one of the previous video, uh, an alternative to make sense. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna show you uh, what is all about. Um, that's uh, something I started yesterday, kind of like a bit of the uh, old virus kind of vibe. <laughs> Anyway, let's start. Let's focus on the drums. Let me mute all the other channels. And actually, let me call, let me change the color on this one. Cool. So, uh, yeah, so there's uh, drums, you got heads, we got a kick, a uh, snare, and another snare. And it sounds like this. Oops. All right, so on the drum bus, I have uh, this clipper called JST uh, Clip. It's uh, my favorite clipper so far. Uh, this company is, I think it's a John, John Sturgeon, something like that. Um, they mainly do plugins designed for heavy metal music. So if you're looking for something really distorting, uh, that's a very good ones. Uh, very clean clipper. So what you have here, this knob here is the gain control. Here you can double up. So, and that's the mix control. So effectively you can work with these clippers in parallel and uh, yeah, mix the signal between the, the clean and le the clipped one. Uh, then after that I got a valve, this compressor is mainly is doing a parallel compression. So you get an idea. Yeah, just to bring all the other elements a little bit more up front. And here I got, uh, yeah, it's my, my, my typical thing, bit of boost on the 40 hertz because I like punchy kick. Uh, but it's quite interesting what is happening here with she, uh, with uh, each drum, drums element. So uh, this one on the top, they're the uh, original samples, that makes sense. Uh, on some of them, yeah, that's some EQ. Uh, but the main thing, these duplicates are the transients duplicate if it makes sense so so each of these as a transient shaper a uh, very extreme transient shaper i'll show you what i mean so let's put this one at 100 so obviously you see oops what and let's put the drums back let's go into the scope let's turn this one on for off for timing so I should have completely creeping, dr yeah, the drums, uh, creeping, yeah, so, actually, let me turn off those two as well, yeah, yeah, let's go a little bit more. So the drums are clipping, as you can see. Uh, so the, the cool thing, uh, etc., about these plugins is that I can uh, mix it and let the transients, transients come out. See? Yeah, let's keep it this way. Um, now, let me turn this one off and careful with your ears. Uh, let me put this one down. So you can hear it, the transient is really, really extreme, but that's how it works. So we go back, let's put um, this one. And 
let's keep an eye on the scope. So yeah, you can see a uh, very nice trend. So the point is that uh, it's quite simple. I call these kind of like parallel transients, if that makes sense. So you have the original uh, signal, original channels, and you have a duplicated with very extreme transients. So the cool thing is that you can mix the balance between the two. And uh, you have the advantage on the transient ch uh, uh, channel through the transient shaper to, yeah, to get very tight or a little bit wider. You have to experiment until you get the nice results, basically. Uh, but yeah, that's quite uh, quite useful uh, technique. Uh, sometimes, as I say, I use the compressor one that I showed yesterday. Sometimes I use this one. They both works well. It depends from project to, to project, obviously. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, yeah, for example, uh, where is that? Let me see. So, yeah, let's take this as an example, okay? That's the original. That's the transient one, okay? So, the settings of on the on the uh, original one I got a any Q and there should be the same settings yeah the same settings on the uh, on the transient one actually it's slightly different it's already is already yeah that's some EQ going on uh, but yeah the, the point is that is like um, obviously is try to keep the same effects on the uh, original uh, channel and the transient one but on the transient one, you can even try to, uh, yeah, EQ uh, a bit if you want to have it even more snappy transient. So you can work it that way. It will sound all right. So. And uh, let me see. And last thing, but probably a lot of you do it already uh, reverb on the drums is usually always better to have the reverb in sand and uh, uh, yeah you apply your setting in this case I just put the reverb on the snare yeah you can hear it so because if you have it through the sand you have simply more control you can uh, cut out bottom or, uh, of the reverb signal and uh, I usually have the reverb completely uh, wet at 100 percent and uh, yeah I think that's uh, that's all let's have a look let's have a listen to the loop again <laughs> Alright, so hope you enjoyed this one as well. Take care guys, bye.